Hello, and welcome back to the podcast where you are invited for lighthearted conversations about things that matter as you seek to live your most meaningful, beautiful, and joyful life. I'm your host, Dr. Edie Wadsworth, and I hope you enjoy your stay here at the House of Joy. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the podcast. Woohoo! Episode two, Emmy House of Joy. Let's go. You guys, we are so excited to be back today we're talking about new year's resolutions the new year baby the new year baby we're in it. i know we're in it happy 2024 by the way listen i was just reading the girls an ep not an episode a blog post, a blog post. from 2012 yeah. i wrote about the new year every year that i blogged so i'm going to read a little piece of that to you in a minute but we're going to talk about new year's resolutions why we don't do them yep and what we do instead. It's revolutionary. It's revolutionary. It is. And mostly it's going to be just a fun conversation between me and my daughter, Emmy. We're so sitting on the couch. <laughs> we're sitting on the couch. We've got our slippers on. We have our slippers. We have the dog here. We have our drinks and our little mugs. So we're just happy to be here. Yes. Now, Emmy, I want you to tell me. We thought we would start with a little confession from each of us. Yeah. So, um, Emmy, how did your week go? How did your day go? <laughs> <laughs> my week was good. My day was good. I think like we are ready to go. We, yep. we are filming the podcast today. Yep. We're downstairs and in true ED fashion, like seriously five minutes before we were ready to go. We're moving the furniture We're moving around. the furniture. We're moving the couch. We've got three people moving the couch. Bandit's on the couch and Bandit falls, falls off. Falls off the couch. And he seemed really, like, kind of not in good shape. He seemed kind of hurt. And yeah. so I'm bending down. He's, like, barking, growling. And I try to come back up. And seriously, like, my knee popped out like, of place. popped out of place. <laughs> I'm not getting, like... Yeah. I started, like, my the Sweating, color went out of my face. Crying. I thought I might pass out. I thought I might throw up. Like, yep. everyone was like, oh, it's funny until, no, she's crying. And yeah. it was not good. I am reporting that I'm okay. She's okay, folks. I did not think. I actually thought, like, we're not going to be able to do this today, but I'm actually better. Yes. Hopefully, you can't see my, like, puffy, crying <laughs> eyes from the view. But she did can, say a minute ago, she goes, gosh, I hope you can't see the three layers of concealer that I had to put on to conceal yeah. that I've been crying. But she's better now. Yeah, so nothing like that type of thing to just throw you into a situation. Yeah, and to remind you that you're getting older. This is what happens to us old people. We mm -hmm. just hurt things randomly. You said the devil was trying to... Yes, the devil is down. trying to take down the house of joy. He knows that this podcast <laughs> is about to make waves and he, he's not ready for it. He's not ready. Uh, the other funny thing that happened today is that Emmy has been, I would say, on a health journey. Oh, my gosh. She's taking... I mean, if you want to say that, you could. She's taking deep dives into <laughs> things that I've been interested in for years. When Emmy and Ellie were younger, I would take them around as I was teaching natural health classes to all of these essential oil supplement classes they were so bored by it and now seriously like tell them what you just asked me to do for you and your friends before that like being dragged to an essential oils class as a 12 year old where you're talking about female hormones female hormones <laughs> like things i just did not need to understand i thought it was all just like voodoo all of the old women getting together and now i came in today and i was like mom I ordered beef organs to take as a supplement. <laughs> I ordered beef liver supplement. I'm like, as soon as she said it, I hop up on a stool, go into my supplement cabinet, and to I be honest, I don't even liver. know. Like, I really don't even know what it does. Well, it does great things. I'm easily influenced. <laughs> Seriously, but we are so happy to be here. We're excited to talk about New Year, the New Year, New Year's resolutions. I think it's because I'm a January baby. Mm -hmm. I was born on January fourth, which it in a way is kind of difficult because everything you get for Christmas, everybody says, this your is birthday. for your birthday and for Christmas. Yeah. So I, I feel like part of the reason I became obsessed with the new year, new year's resolutions is because it's like, this is my birthday time. I, I just have always loved January. Mm -hmm. I have it's always, your season. it's my season. I love winter. I love nesting. I, I love everything. See, about it. No, I don't like any of it really. <laughs> 
to be honest <laughs> it's cold like seriously right now my feet are frozen i'm not okay but i do think that the way that you look at it it does have a bit of a bigger impact on the rest of your year like i yes. kind of always look at this season as like yeah oh, everyone is going to put pressure on me to like do all these new things and then yeah. it puts pressure on myself to like yeah and i don't like it and i think our discussion today about goals and setting new, re- new year's resolutions will really help you like whether you find yourself being like a seasoned goal setter mm-hmm. new year's resolution person or you're like i was for years you set goals and then three weeks later you've tossed all that to the side and i mean i did that kind of thing for years i think either way you'll enjoy the discussion. I do think I have kind of a unique way of thinking about the new year, uh, goal setting. We don't, uh, by the way, if you look back at how I've talked about goals in the past, I've always been obsessed with the new year, always been obsessed with setting goals. Over the years though, I have stopped like setting big, like, like big, huge resolutions and I have a different way of thinking about it so we're going to get into that yeah that's actually what I was going to ask you like do you think that it's actually good to like make a set list you know I feel like that's the big thing everyone does is sit down and they're like okay this is what my 2024 is going to be do you think that's I do think that's really valuable because I think that a lot of times we don't if we don't in some way do that, we don't even know what we really want. We Mm. don't know what our dreams are. And I feel like I say this all the time, but I feel like I'm kind of a dream peddler Mm -hmm. and I do help people. I'm a dream peddler, baby. (laughs) I do help people wake up to their dreams. Mm -hmm. I just think that, you know, and we'll get into this, but I think that setting a year long goal it's a long time to try to think about the same thing. Mm-hmm. So I just have a little bit of a different approach now. But I do think it is powerful and important. And um, if I look back on my own journey, today we had ups- we were upstairs and we had all of my journals and all of my planners literally for the fa- past 15 years yeah. sitting out. And when I looked through those... Every amazing thing that I've created in my life is written down in those journals. Well, even like a weekend ago, my friends were here and you had us do like an exercise of journaling. Yeah. Which we have an episode planned out all All about about journaling. journaling, So I won't get too much into it. But you did bring out one of your journals and it literally like kind of exactly laid out what our dream for this podcast is. It did! It was like from... 2013 or something so that is crazy I forgot about that yeah yeah Yeah. and so I want you to you know like as we're talking about it and Mm -hmm. sharing some of our stories I mean I want you to think about it for yourself like are you awake to your dreams do you write down like oh this is what I'd like to do this is who I'd like to become this is you know something that I would love to do someday and I just feel like when we do that it gives us because our brains naturally go toward everything that's wrong Mm -hmm. and when you give your brain something worthy to think about well I think that's where most people's like at least for me like when I think of a goal it's usually thinking about what's wrong with my life like what do I need to fix yeah and then that's where that stems from it's not ever stemming from a place of like what am I gonna grow more towards the bigger goal you know yeah and we were looking up some stats earlier and it said that I think nine percent of people Mm -hmm. who create or set resolutions like actually actually go through with it follow through with it here's the thing about that though I think I think that's part of the reason why I have a I feel like I have a better method for doing it Mm -hmm. but also nine here's the other truth And there's a lot of good statistics about this with journaling. The truth of the matter is, unless you write it down, you have almost no chance of doing it. Because it's never... Because you never... You never think about it. Conceived of it or wrote it down. So I think that statistic can be a little bit deceiving. It can be a little bit like, well, why would I even do it? Well, at least you have a 10% chance of making your dreams come true. Yeah. Now, I want to start this by talking about my biggest epic fail... Of like a New Year's goal? With a New Year's resolution? resolution. Yes. Okay. I've had a lot of epic fails. I mean, I feel like if you're not failing at a lot of them, you're probably... I honestly feel like 
any most goal that I <laughs> set in my, for myself in January, you know, <laughs> by around April, she's oh, out honey. the window. <laughs> are you kidding me most people by february they always say that too like if you walk into the gym in january and it's crowded don't worry it won't be in february no it's never (laughs) it never lasts it won't last yeah but i have had this goal well i don't have it now (laughs) because i've learned a lot about Mm -hmm. goal setting and resolutions but i had this goal forever that i was going to run a marathon now forever i have loved to run your dad and i have run so many half marathons together. I know. That's crazy because that feels like so not a part of my lifetime. I know. Because I was were little. little. But dad and I loved running races together. It's funny because the first half marathon we ever ran together, I was having a lot of foot problems. <laughs> and Stevie, he's a foot doctor. So he brings a shot of Marcane, like a steroid shot, <laughs> drives it in the car. Classic. When we get to the race, he Classic. puts a shot in my foot so that I can make it through the race. So we're sitting in the car and I'm like bracing myself and he's putting a shot in my foot. Anyways, dad and I have run a lot of races. That's not your typical, um, not your typical half marathon marathon story. story. No, but, um, I put that on my list. I think for 10 years, run a marathon. Yeah. Yeah. Did I ever run a marathon? Well, no, I did not. You did not. (laughs) You did run a half marathon. I ran several half marathons. We just ran one together. You and I and Taylor ran one last year. And you guys, I, I still, I think in that run thought to myself someday, maybe I still will run a marathon. But after that race, I got to mile 11. First of all, you guys were so far ahead of me that I was running by myself. That's a little bit of a stretch. Taylor (laughs) was so far ahead. I was a little bit. I was a little ahead. You were ahead of me. I got to mile 11. This was in Nashville. Mm -hmm. And (laughs) I saw the medical tent. And I said to myself, do I need medical attention? What could I use (laughs) as an excuse? (laughs) To get medical attention. Bandit, he's excited. It's okay. Yeah. So I was like, I was really questioning for myself. Do I need medical attention? I don't feel that well. Yeah. But I knew it was mile 11. We're getting close you know, for it to be done. So I kept running. I finished it. But after I finished that race, I was like, nope, epic fail. I'm never running a marathon. I don't even want to anymore. I said the same thing when I got done with it. And for some reason, I am now signed up for another one in March. A half marathon. It's a half. (laughs) I don't know if I could ever actually do a full marathon. That feels like a sort of suffering that yeah. I don't know why, why you would ever would put that? yourself through that pain. Yeah. A half marathon feels like a challenge. It's definitely hard, but you could do it, you know? Yeah. A marathon, I got to mile, we were, the marathoners were like passing us. I know. And we were almost done. I was like, I literally don't know how they're going to finish. Like, I felt so bad for them. I know. But, yeah. Me too. Well, so here's what I found. I was looking for the list that I wrote down because I know that I used to blog about this all the yeah. time. So if you're if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to pull this up and read a little snippet of it. I was looking for all the years that I set the goal to run a marathon <laughs> and never run it. But I did fa- find something that I'm going to read because it's really interesting. And I think it'll give you a little bit of perspective of like my own heart with the new year and fresh starts and all of that. So let me just read a little snippet from the old Life and Grace blog. <clears throat> I am a complete sucker for a fresh start. The new year is like manna from heaven. I'm overwhelmed with list making and dream seeking and soul searching. Hope swells and washes the memory of past failures clean. I couldn't care less that I have made this same list 20 times before and didn't follow through with it. As a matter of fact, this tendency toward renewal and resolution isn't even our idea. We borrowed it from our father who promised new mercies every morning and fresh starts 70 times seven times. I completely believe deep down in my heart that this year will be different and you couldn't convince me otherwise if your life depended on it. Despite the fact that I made this same list when I turned 40, I still haven't run a marathon (laughs) or made homemade bagels. Now, we're going to stop because that's true at that time I still had not run a marathon I still haven't but what did you walk into this morning no I mean, joke y'all and you had not even looked at I had not even looked you that up. did this like another I started ED. the bagels last night no she was making homemade she bagels made homemade today bagels. 
<laughs> so the devil tries, but Edie Wadsworth <laughs> tries even harder. <laughs> she does. So we did get the homemade bagels on That's the list. That's pretty crazy. But I do love what you said. I think so many people look at New Year's resolutions and just are so down on themselves yes. for not getting to it. Because the majority of the time, I mean, like I said, any goal or resolution that I've ever set, it's almost like setting yourself up for, for failure, failure if you yeah. look at it that way. Because yeah. you're probably not going to actually stick with it. Yeah for that long yeah maybe for a little bit but the way you framed it even that long ago was like i'm gonna keep i'm gonna keep doing it baby yeah yeah that's like such it's a lesson. funny too because when i was practicing medicine mm -hmm. one of the things that i noticed i helped people like lose weight and stop smoking and one of the things that i noticed back then is that people who successfully stop smoking stop like 10 times before they before really they stop. actually get to the last one yeah and so if you're on your 10th time to try to make that change or mm -hmm. lose weight or stop smoking or run that half marathon, if you're on your 10th try, you're so close mm -hmm. to getting there instead of seeing it as, well, I just keep I failing. Keep failing. At this. Every time I say that I'll do something, I yeah. just keep failing. Yeah. And I do think that's the difference often between people who really watch their a lot of their dreams come true is we just don't give up. You just keep year after year trying. You keep believing that this time it's going to be different and your like courage and tenacity to just keep showing up to your life and keep trying the thing that you mm. want to do I think can be so powerful so I love helping people reframe it instead of saying well I set these you know these goals and I never follow through yeah but you're so much closer yeah to following through if yeah. you just keep at it yeah I love that I now, love that so much I want to fin I want to read one other little snippet of this because i think it's really important isn't part of the reward of our new year's lists the longing and planning and hope beyond all hope that this year surely things will be different the gift is there already in the courage to believe and when i fail and i will i fall hard into the hands of grace there's really no downside and even if you don't buy into my abiding optimism, what's the worst that can happen? What if I don't keep my resolution to read 42 books this year? What if I'm a complete failure and only read 30? And what if I set out to run a marathon and only manage to run a 10K? And what if I still don't make those bagels? Here's why it doesn't matter. God has given me everything I could possibly need in his son, and I am forgiven and blessed with every good gift from him. The rest is icing on the cake. I hope that despite many of my failures and frailties, I always approach the newness of the year and the newness of life with anticipation and joy. Wow. Wow. It's just so crazy because the whole like, and we've talked about this, but yeah, the reason that we wanted to start this podcast, yeah, kind of, you know, the inspiration behind it was your blog. Yeah. And just finding that little snippet that you probably wouldn't have looked for, honestly. I wouldn't have if we hadn't, if we hadn't doing this weren't today. doing this. Yeah. But it's like that saying, like the anticipate the anticipation of something is better is the gift. always than yes. like what you actually are wanting so bad. And that's kind of like I feel like what you're saying a yes. little bit. Like yes. the working towards the courage that it takes to have a goal yeah. is kind of the reward from it and we talked about this and i looked it up when i was looking up like old journals and old planners when i first started this journey i would get a new planner and be mm -hmm. so excited like and i would tell myself like i'm a person who starts a lot of things well come february i wouldn't fill out as much of the planner and it's then like listen dwindles down. by the time april would come there's like blank planner from april till december that's still that's still where i'm at that's okay girl so but here's what i will say i just kept at it and maybe the next year i would get till may and maybe the next year i would you know get till june and i would say for the past five years i am now a person who plans her day every day i fill out my planner all the time it helps me in so many ways, it helps me. And what I teach in my program is setting 90 day goals instead of year goals, because 90 days is something that we can really focus on something mm. for 90 days. And I think about like even this room, I set as a 90 day goal because people are always like, I'm just not that kind of person, you know, like I don't want to 
I don't want my life to be that serious. Listen, you guys. Be that serious in what way? Well, like, write a book. You know, like, oh, all those like things really that set run something. a marathon. Yeah. Well, I've set goals, like, this This summer I set a goal to learn how to wake surf. Yeah, so you don't have be, to be serious. It doesn't have to be serious. It can be fun. So I set a 90-day goal to turn this living room in our downstairs, if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're sh- if you're not, you should come over and see on YouTube. It's yes, gorgeous. Please. Brand new room that we created as a 90-day goal. And it was so fun. Like, dreaming it up and deciding, like, what I wanted the room to be for. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, at the time, I couldn't have known that this was be where we, like, film this podcast. I know. You never... That was never... It was never in in the the cards. Yeah. And I just think it's so serendipitous that when we dare to say, like, hey, I would like a room in my house with a giant Johnny Cash picture (laughs) that kind of reminds me of a honky-tonk or a speakeasy... Mm -hmm. Like, that makes no sense, except it was the dream of my heart. Dream your dream. Dream your dream, baby. And Will you so, explain, like, for maybe anybody that doesn't know what a 90-day goal, like, will you kind of explain how that, how you set that up for yourself? Like, yeah. how you... Yeah, I read this book probably about seven or eight years ago. I was flying to Salt Lake City, and I read this book called The 12-Week Year. I was trying to figure out, like, why can I not stick with something for a year well I think that's why like if I look back because I was just even like reflecting on my past year and I did overcome and like do things that at the beginning of the year you know I wanted yeah but like the little goals that you know those fun things or those like little things it does always feel like Oh, well, I say that I'm going to do that. And then, and then I don't. I never end up finishing it. Like, ever. Yeah. I feel like there's literally most things that I set off to do, I don't end up finishing them. And then we tell ourselves that story instead of saying, like, oh, now I'm that much closer to becoming a person who does finish it. Yeah. And I guess that's what I learned in this 12-week year. And I sort of set it up in my own life as 90-day goals. But it helped me realize, like, I'm a person who likes to move fast. It's hard to keep my attention for that long. And so the 90-day thing was like, well, I can, I can focus do, on something I can do for 90 days. For that long. Yeah. yeah. And so I started doing that myself. And then I started, you know, teaching other people what I was doing. And I've just watched it in my own life. Like, seriously, so many amazing things that I've created, I've set it as a 90 day goal so many fun things in my life that I've done I've set it as a 90 day goal and I love helping women do that I love helping them dream about something setting the goal Mm -hmm. and then we you know in our Facebook group where we hear all these celebrations people tell us of seriously amazing things that they do because of this because of that framework of like it's not I think that's part of the reason that new year's resolutions and these these big new year's plans are so they're so filled with so much pressure because it's like something that you have to sustain sustain sustain. for a year yeah and like that feels a lot harder yeah the crazy thing is too you might not be the same person in September that set that you might goal. Not you might not even same. have the same goal. Yeah. Right? And so I think you do something for 90 days and it feels doable. It feels like I can keep up the motivation and energy to do mm-hmm. that. So anyways, we don't set, I don't set any more like big New Year's resolutions, but I do consistently set 90 day goals and it has changed my life. It's changed everything about my life. I think too, and I don't know if you've talked about this or maybe I've just heard you like mention it like not waiting for I think another thing that happens with the new year's resolutions is people just like well I do this so that's (laughs) why I know but like I'll just put it off like I'll put that thing off until Until the new year or until Monday or until the new month or whatever yeah because it makes it feel like you know I'll just get to that yeah and I think a lot of people do that like they get to um you know you get to like September or October in the year And you go, well, I'll just wait till January. But the studies show that if you do that, say your goal was to lose weight, you if you wait until January, you're probably going to gain five or 10 more pounds before then. And if you start now today and don't wait, that's what I love about it, too. It just Mm -hmm. is so much more flexible. I think um, it's also to me, it's more fun because if I look at like 
it might not seem like a big deal to set as a 90 day goal redoing a room in your house. But if you did that for 90 days and then the next 90 days, like you could have your, half your house yeah. done in a year. You see what I well, mean? Well, I think it takes a lot of unnecessarily like time out of it. Like you give yourself that time. Yeah. And then whatever you get done in that time, then you can look back and you did actually do yes. the thing that you said you were going to do. Yeah. And I think it's it's really important, too, to not look at other people's goals or their lives mm-hmm. and say, oh, I should set that. I have a good friend, Denise, and she would tell me, like, when you talk about goals, like, I feel guilty because I'm like, you know, I'm in my 60s. I don't really want to, like, run a marathon and write a book. And I said, well, what's something fun that you have wanted to learn how to do that you haven't learned yet? And she goes, I want to learn the electric slide. And I'm like, <laughs> yes, I'm here for this. That is something I can get down with. I can get down with that. And so then she came to one of my live events and she goes, guess what I learned how to do. So we play the electric slide. She shows us the mm-hmm. results of her 90 day goal. And it was just so fun. And I think looking at it like that, first of all, I think it has helped me really, really enjoy my life. I Every goal doesn't have to be crazy serious. wish that so many people my age could hear all of this too, and I hope that they do, because especially my age, like, it is just full of pressure to get things done and to, like especially with TikTok, like things are just so in your face that yeah. other people are doing. It's yeah. the same thing. Like when you watch someone totally killing it at life, like they lost the weight, they're eating healthy, they're waking up at 5 a.m., they're going to the gym every day. Like you feel that intense pressure yeah. from everyone around you. Yes. And it's never set up in a way of like breaking it down. It's just like, you need to change everything. Even like the podcast I was listening to, it was great. I loved the podcast, but it's like almost throwing <laughs> every, you need to basically change everything. everything. Everything you're doing is wrong. And then once you hear yeah. that, you're like, well, I'm not going to change anything because that feels way more overwhelming than yeah. just focusing on one goal. Well, and I think the other thing, and this is what I love to teach when I'm thinking about my own goals or teaching it is you have, we all have this thought in our minds, like when I get to that certain weight, when I make that amount of money, when I write that book, when I meet that guy, then everything's going to be great. And that is a lie. Mm. And you can look at Hollywood, people who have everything, they have the fitness they want, the guy they want, the house they want, all the money in the world, and they're miserable. Mm -hmm. So the goal is not just to accumulate a bunch of goals. The goal is to become everything God created you to be and to learn how to truly enjoy your life in the process because, again, this is called House of Joy. House of Joy, baby. House of Joy. (laughs) Because the point is that if we don't learn how to be present, really enjoy ourselves now, being 30 pounds thinner is Mm -hmm. not going to do anything for you. Yep. Except probably make you uptight that now, oh gosh, now I can't gain the weight. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so it's not, the end point of the goal is not the goal. It's really learning to enjoy the process of life. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. I think that's something that this year, especially with this new job with you, I think I'm like blessed with the time and the energy to pour into like being more present into the things that I'm doing. Yeah. Because that's always been something that I've really struggled with is consistency of like, I know in my heart the things that would make my life better. Yeah. You know, and I think a lot of people were given all of these things all the time. Most people probably know what they could do to yeah. enhance, you know, whether that's health or, you know, actual steps. Yeah. But the consistency and the presence in what you're doing every day, that's yes. the part that like you don't want to keep doing it if you're not enjoying it, if you feel that pressure. Right. And I think I have so for so much of my life operated from that pressure that I'm really passionate to help people. Mm. Like, what can you create in your life from a place of joy? What can you create from ease? Mm. What can you create because you have learned how to 
appreciate your life and take good care of yourself and be intentional, you know, about what you're doing. And it, it's such a better place to create from than pressure or comparison of what somebody else is doing. That's another thing I was going to bring up, especially like what I said with just the age, especially, and I don't know how it is for people your age, but I assume that it's kind of similar, even though like, I feel like I'm much more exposed to like, yeah, what people are doing online every day. Yeah. But it's the comparison of, like, you really feel like people are passing you up. Mm -hmm. And it's right in your face. Like, you know. At least it appears that way. It appears that way. And I think that pressure can really. And I think for women my age, what I notice more is that we get to a point in life where we just stop growing. Where Mm -hmm. we stop having dreams. Because... For most women my age, you've gotten the degree, maybe you've gotten the job, you've had the kids, you've you've got the house. Yeah. And then you just kind of stop, especially if you're in a transition of where your kids are leaving or whatever. And I just want to say, wake up, because those dreams that you have are God given. And when you don't live those out and when you don't embody them and give them life, you're hiding not just the gifts that you could be giving, but him in you. Mm. He's the one who gives them to you. So I don't know. I just love helping people wake up to that, whether that's through a new, you know, set a new year's resolution if you want or a 90 day goal, but whatever you do really take some time to sit down and go, what do I really want? What, what, what wants to be born in me? Yeah. Like, what do I dream about creating? Who do I, dream about becoming and when I was thinking about that for myself I knew that I was going to have the whole family here oh I'm getting weirdly emotional for thanks yeah for Thanksgiving <laughs> oh, gosh. and we have two little grandbabies mm-hmm. and I wanted to have a place where I could bring those grandbabies downstairs and put on some great music and just dance and line dance and laugh and when we after Thanksgiving this year when we came down and did that's that, that's exactly what it, it was, was I don't even care about the food. I don't care about all the things that I used to care about, that we have the perfect Thanksgiving, then it looks great on paper. All I wanted to do is just enjoy my family, come downstairs, sing, dance, mm-hmm. and those little babies were so cute. Yeah. And them, you know, dancing around. And it was like, that to me, that's the reason that I like to do this. That's the reason that I want to envision, what do I, what kind of legacy do I want to leave? What do I want my life to be about? Yeah. And I want those babies to remember that Grammy was present. Well, it's present. the same thing. It's the presence in a moment. Yes. Which is why we should be wanting to make our life better. Yes. And more quality. So true. Well, because I think the other thing is that life is full, is going to be full of problems. Those are a mm-hmm. given. The fact that you might take time to dance and sing after Thanksgiving, not a given. Yeah. So what are the things in your life that you would have to purposefully choose in order for them to happen? Well, I think in in sticking with goals yeah. or that a lot of times does bring the joy so that you can have that presence and yeah. that life and that fun dancing or just laughing I feel like setting up your mind yeah and a lot of times that's what's rooted in wanting to be healthier yes eat healthier move more yeah a lot of times like really me too it's because I want to be able to be on the I floor be playing yes. and dancing and singing and <laughs> that's a little different I mean like yeah. uh, clearly my knee is <laughs> acting like an old lady but I actually am you know 23 yeah I was gonna ask you like in terms of if you had advice to give for people who are my age and it's not necessarily them feeling stuck like they don't want to dream anymore I think a lot of people my age are dreaming yeah but they're not the goals are a little different what would your advice be for you know people my age yeah I think it would be the reframing of well, I tried that and failed. Mm. Okay, good. Yeah, it's not a bad thing. It that shouldn't. is awesome. You got your first 10 tries. Mm. How many more times are you willing to show up and try and fail at it? Because that tells me way more than the one person who it looks like from the outside is always just killing it. Yeah, we, um, my sister Ellie, she is a dancer and she's always been the type of person who goes for their dreams like she just since she was little has like 
fully gone for what she wanted, which is dance. Yeah. And part of what she does, and I don't want to like, you know, expose her, but like (laughs) part of what she does is audition. Yeah. And a lot of people in that space, in that dancing world, you know, most of their auditions end up there it's 95 percent 95 for all of them fail, yes yeah. it's mostly failure and yeah. for that one five percent of like getting the thing you want yeah and I like look at her so much and it's like so much admiration to be able to like put yourself out there so much yes. for constant like I mean not constant but a lot of failure like that's what it think I think of yeah of someone who constantly is putting themselves in that danger position yes of failure yes but she still does it because one day and it's already gotten her so far you know yes the other thing that I think about when you say that is I I, you know asking yourself like what would my best highest self do how Mm. would she think how what would she go for Mm. like my best highest most courageous self and and I love tapping into that, so that might help too. And then you just let yourself, and you just be willing to fail. You yeah. just like I think that's the yeah. thing I struggle with the most is just beating down on myself so much yeah. for the things that I don't do, and then yeah. you don't allow yourself to like look back and really, even if you don't accomplish those little goals, you've probably accomplished something that if you took the time to look back on it, you would be really proud of. Yes. So. And the progress that you're making at the time feels slow. Like all of those years where I was trying to be a person who planned and had goals and I fail, 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 fail. It's like failing forward. Yeah. And if you're willing to do that, you can have an extraordinary life because the worst part about failure is how really is how you're going to feel and how you're going to treat yourself in the failure. Mm. So I've learned to be kind to myself. I'm like, good girl. You got another failure under you're your gonna belt. You're going to get up again. Gonna get up again. And I think if you can learn how to do that, it makes it fun and easy. Yeah. So I am so curious, those of you listening to the podcast or watching on YouTube, what are your thoughts about, do you set resolutions? Do you have goals? Tell us everything. And even if you wanted to leave us a review to ask a question, we're going to use the reviews as a way to answer questions. Yes, leave a review and we will try to look at those before and bring them into our next episode. Yes, because we would love to hear from you. We want this to be a conversation, not just between Emmy and I, but with you too. So we would love to hear from you on your thoughts about that. What are you dreaming about? What are your goals? What are the things that you've always, you know, wanted to do? Yes. Um, Emmy and I are going to take the time as we finish this episode to do our Yeah. Three we're going to try on each episode to give you three favorite things that we're loving right now. And we plan these a little bit ahead and I just want you to like think about the difference <laughs> of <laughs> what we're both bringing to the table here, okay? Okay. So I um these are my three favorite things right of now. the right now I'm like holy grail loving and I went like okay. pretty um you know. I feel like you went a little toxic, but go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, um, so my first favorite thing is the L'Oreal shampoo and conditioner, but not it's not the regular one. It's the pro one, and my hairstylist used this on me. And yeah, now that I'm learning about health, it is toxic, and it is bad, probably. <laughs> I'm sorry, L'Oreal, but I'm still going to use it because there's some things I don't skimp on. What are you loving about it, though? Just Soft like and really silky. I mean, your hair always looks great. I mean, stop. But <laughs> I really do feel like being so honest, like my roommate has used it. She was life changed. Okay. So my second favorite thing is currently my newly subscription, my yes. monthly newly subscription. Clothing subscription site. Yes. Yeah, so you can newly, rent clothes. if they want to sponsor us, I would happily have you do that. Um, mm-hmm. But basically it's they send you you can pick out six items every month and they send it to you and you can wear it as much you can stain it you can stain it and they'll get it out yeah and you can take the tags out like seriously it's so great um the problem with it is is i just end up wanting to buy a few of the items yeah but i don't really care it does it you you try it first you get to try it yeah it's really helpful for like events like if you have something to go to in the month of december like 
you can just order a bunch of dresses or whatever you need it for. Yep. Um, yeah, I've been absolutely loving it. I did it for a while too, Em. I did love it more at first. Mm. Now I don't find as many things that I love, but it might be fun for people to try. I don't know. Something about it, like they just have so much free people. They have so yep. much anthropology. anthropology. Yep. And those are my favorite brands. Like I know that I'll like it, which yep. is probably sh- should be a sign that I should stop because I just end up <laughs> buying them. But it's okay. It's okay. Uh, One of my favorite things. Love it. Month. Okay. So I think it was the CMA Awards a few weeks ago. Um, Post Malone, they, it was like a tribute to Joe Diffie. Post Malone, Morgan Wallen, Hardy sang Pickup Man, which is one of my very favorite karaoke songs. The last time I was in Nashville, you were with me. We were you, at... I will say, you do go hard. I go hard on the Honky Tonk karaoke. So mm-hmm. we were in Rippy's mm-hmm. Honky Tonk, and the guy up there sang Pickup Man. I thought I was going to die. I yeah. love that song so much. To be honest, I had never heard... I mean, I'm sorry, but I, I have never heard that song you before. you don't know Joe Diffie, but I'm going to tell you, Tom and I in the car have been doing deep dives on Joe Diffie. Now Tom knows all about Joe Diffie. And now we have sang Pickup Man so many times, the Post Malone version with Eli. He's going to know it by He heart. loves it so much. He does. That song, just go search Post Malone, Pickup Man. It's my favorite Who knew Post thing. Malone? He's so good at country. He should. I mean, when that first came out, like I think a couple years ago, people were like, he's in the country. I was like, oh, <sighs> He's okay. so good. Yeah. But no, it's pretty good. It's he's pretty really good. good. Okay, my second thing, my favorite, second favorite thing is um, a docu-series. Could you say it's a docu-series or it just a movie series? It's not really a documentary, but it... I would say it's like a, a, a TV series or something. <laughs> yeah, so it's called George and Tammy. Can you tell I'm obsessed with old school honky-tonk You era. did make us watch the first episode and it's compelling. I is it was not? very compelled. A biographical drama, drama television, television miniseries. miniseries. <laughs> Go watch it. I, I need to watch it. I'm not very good at watching shows, but those are the type of shows that I do like yeah. want to watch. It's based on the story of George Jones and Tammy Wynette set mm-hmm. in Nashville in the 70s. It is like the soundtrack to my childhood. It also is the inspiration, honestly, for this room because the decor, the outfits, I want everything Tammy Wynette wore. I know I work from home, but would I wear a cute mini dress with some white go-go boots on a Zoom call? For sure, 100%. You sure would. All her clothes are to die for. All the decor in that show is it to is die It is really for. good. It's really good. It makes you want to like go back to that time. And George and Jones be a basically part of it. is my dad. Like, when I saw him driving the lawnmower because he got his license <laughs> taken away because of a DUI, I'm he's like... He's driving it on the road. He's driving it on the road. <laughs> a John Deere. And I'm like, this is so my dad, I cannot even tell you. So, I'm sure that I like it maybe more than the average bear, but you yeah. guys were already No, it was it good. I, w- I would want to keep watching it. So, go watch George and Tammy. Third thing is this room. And we've already talked about this room a lot on this episode. But can I tell a story about this room? Tell me everything i was at my like old my last job which is not that old it was a couple months ago but i was there and i was talking to mom on the phone on my lunch break and she was like emmy i'm turning the downstairs into a honky tonk (laughs) and i was like okay like that did not i didn't get it i didn't get it at all but then you kept she was like i want it to be like a honky tonk bar <laughs> slash karaoke, karaoke slash upscale speakeasy and i was like okay she's gonna go for it and then i walk down here the ceilings are painted and it looks great it really does it's such a vibe it's, it's a vibe. not what like when you say honky tonk i know it's not quite honky tonk i wouldn't say but it is no. giving like 70s speakeasy 70s like speakeasy let's do a line dance together yeah and it, it does make me want to like redo my whole room and how many times have you and i done the boot scoot and boogie in this room already unwillingly <laughs> i would say but we have done it a lot I just remember the faces on some of my cousins that were sitting in this room. They're trying to like play football or something on the TV. And, and all of a sudden, blasting. You come down the stairs, mm-hmm. the music is blasted, everyone's up dancing. 
it, it was you great. do create a vibe right? even you when know. your friends were here last weekend i made them all learn the boot scoot and boogie too yeah so and you know it's seeping into me because i did one time do the boot scoot and boogie in front of my whole office <laughs> in my corporate office and then i got a little plaque and they said boot scootin emmy or something on it if this setup wasn't so hard to do right now we could give a little demo yeah. but maybe we'll <laughs> include like a clip of us doing yeah, it or we could something try. like that we could try okay. all right you guys that's it for this episode of the podcast we love you so much thank you thank for you. listening to house of joy yes make yourself a house of joy yes have a great week see you see next ya. time